I wanted to put up a couple of verses tonight. We start in James 127, pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Um, this verse has always touched my heart. I've always been mission-minded. And it just gives us this idea. Um, when we were on our last trip, we went to Ibuga, which was a, a feeding center and pre-K center that was um, Matt had done work from or four years before, and we were uh, making another visit there to reestablish connections. And we got there, we actually, uh, Matt was having a discussion with the, the town elder because the town elder really didn't want us in there because he had this impression that all the groups that came in there just wanted to take pictures of the kids that were in need and the kids in their clothing and um, their cute faces and their beautiful eyes that you fall in love with when you're there. So he had this impression and after Matt talked with him and discussed with him, he actually allowed us to come in. And we served them for three days, um, planting a garden, doing fix-up work, cleaning up, removing rats from their little feeding center that they had in there. And then we did a little ministry thing with the kids um, and just totally blessed them. And by the third day, the elder of the town was actually working hand in hand with us. And this is the idea we get with this um, undefiled religion that we're out to serve and bring Jesus not only the gospel, which is the next verse, but to show him that. And because of that, we are able to bring in, we bring in Mark 16, 15, Jesus tells us that we're to go into the world and preach the gospel to all of creation. That opportunity and those walls that we broke down with him by serving in Jesus' name, being humble with him, opened up the opportunity for us to preach the gospel to him. And that's our mission coming up. Uh, Matt will give you a little bit of an overview when, a, when it comes up. But as believers who have put our faith and trust in Jesus, we are called by him to go into the world and preach the gospel and also follow up on what James, James taught us there. And as Pastor Shane has been teaching, we are in a body and on our trip, and on this trip, we will be the feet in the hands of the church. You guys will be our prayer warriors behind us. We need your support in prayers as there's some difficult situations that can arise there. Um, and we just need your support. That's the most important thing that you pray for us. And the things we'd like you to pray for is that we stay on the path that God has created beforehand, that we and our personalities and our egos doesn't take it off the track that the Lord wants us to be on and that we would be guided by his Holy Spirit. And beforehand, before we actually go on the trip, that you would pray that the hearts of the people in East Watini would be softened for the gospel. That's our goal, is to reach them for the gospel. And that overall, that we would be protected not only beforehand health issues, but health issues when we get there. If any health issues are, arise there, it becomes difficult um, for us to get out of the country. So be praying for that. And then lastly, anything that the Lord puts on your hearts. So a few quick facts I wanted to show you. First question people usually ask me, where is East Watini? How do you get there? How long does it get, or how long does it take you to get there? So we're up here on the left-hand side. We'll be flying into London. It's a 10-hour flight. We will then have a 12-hour layover in London, where we'll actually get some time and be able to go around and tour London. Then we get back on the plane for 11 hours and fly down to um, East Watini. If I say uh, Swaziland, Forgive me, that's the name of the country beforehand. So you see the little country down there, surrounded by South Africa. It's landlocked by them. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> and this is just a, a picture of the country. Mabane is the capital, and we'll be traveling around and ministering in all these areas. And if you look at the population of Washington versus um, Eswatini, Washington is at 7.8 million. The total population of Eswatini is 1.16 million. The area is 9720 square miles. Washington is 71,362. It gives you this idea of how small of a country it is. It's a monarchy ruled by a king, and you know Washington State uh, were ruled by a or ruled by a governor. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, median age is 22 years old. Washington is 38. Average rain. It's 52, which is amazing. We'll be going over in the summertime, and it's a very, or we'll be going over the wet summertime. I'm sorry, I've been there. This is my third trip now. It'll be very um, wet there, but it's very dry in the off season. It'll be green in one season, and then completely dust and desert-like in the other. And here's the, the one that's amazing is, average yearly wage is $848. 
they earn on average 40 cents an hour. Here in Washington, our average is 30,139, and I think it's around $15 an hour minimum wage. So that gives you an idea of the country and where we're going and the people we're gonna to minister to. Um, and like I said, I've been there three times and there's a reason I've been there three times. These, these people are a very loving people. Um, the children are very loving. Um, and they're, they're without fathers there, as, as Matt will probably mention, this is the HIV capital of the world. So there's a lot of orphans, a lot of widows, and we get the opportunity to go there in Jesus' name and minister to them. So it's a total blessing. Um, the video is going to be a little grainy. This came from an Android phone, and we weren't able to make it extremely clear, but you, you'll get the picture, and then uh, Matt will follow up afterwards with some additional pictures. So, Jenna, if you want to run the video, that'd be great. I want to take this opportunity to thank you to you and your family and your team. I say thank you very much for supporting us at One Spiritual Fellowship Ministry for the new structure. This is the new structure we have now. Uh, we, are all, we are using a tent in three weeks because we are the new church. So the tent was blow about the storm and destroyed so now you have the new structure for the church so this new structure is 15 meters by uh, 10 meters and now it's finished the church is using this structure so this structure is good and it's accommodate the church uh, we so thank so much for that support and we have some tanks that you have support us in the church and we say thanks so much for the tanks because we don't have water in our site so now you will restore water uh, in our site so thanks so much for supporting us with the tank and also we want to thank you for the fencing uh, of the church. So now the church is fenced uh, and it's secured and the property of the church is secured. So all pro 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 property of the church is okay and it's secured. So we thank so much for the fencing and we also thank you uh, for the supporting uh, as for feeding the child. So now we are starting feeding the child. So the child now are, are shooting the numbers coming in church and uh, the members of the church are coming with numbers. So we thank so much for supporting us. This support will help the church and the community because now the church, all people see how Jesus done things. So we thank so much for us. Uh, we thank so much for your team uh, to support us. I can't wait to get over there and meet him. He's actually one of the outshoots from Pastor Eric, correct? Okay, if you wanted to load up that first picture, we'll bring up Matt Rainey and he'll give us an update. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here tonight. This is uh, what a special opportunity this is. Pastor Samora is a very special man, and you could um, gather a few things from that video uh, as I did. The man has a very thankful and grateful heart. Um, he knows the difference between the body of Christ standing by and doing nothing and the body of Christ stepping up and praying for him and praying for his community and supporting. And let me tell you, it means the world to these people in this community that they would receive a team from America. That may not seem like such a big deal to you and I, but it means everything to them. That anywhere on this planet, 
God would send them to, to us. This is a really big deal. Not only is this going to be a game changer for this community and this brand new church plant. Friends, this church was planted in March and April. And since that time, uh, yep, they were operating, as Pastor said, in a, in a tent. And we had this tent set up and the st a storm came through and knocked it down. And so they reset the tent back up for the next Sunday and a storm came back through again. And this time it ripped the tent to shreds. So for three weeks, they were just out in the African sun worshiping God, praying for there to be a breakthrough. And it dawned on me that, hey, we've got this team that is prepping to go to Eswatini. I wonder if God would have us go and support him. And so we began to pray about it. And then we took action steps and we sent over some seed money so they could prepare materials for us. When we arrived as a team here, we leave January 5th, they could secure the materials and have them there for us and we could go ahead and build a structure. And you see what they did? They built it. They built the structure. They didn't sit and wait on us, they took action. And even the fence, by the time I had arrived there, after purchasing the property, there was already fence posts in the ground. And I said, Pastor, where did the support come from for these fence posts? We didn't send that support. And he said, oh, my family and I, we run a, a little shop in town and we took the, the proceeds for the month and bought the posts and the concrete. These were all indicators to me that these people were in this. Their hearts were in the right place, their motives. So we were able to, as you can see with some of these pictures, secure these materials. Now, what you don't know that I'm about to share is this structure that is, is a, a structure on the new site is actually a temporary structure for them for church. We will one day be building a, a church structure. This is actually the future business for this site. This is a chicken hen laying house. So we're just moving the church from a collapsed tent into a 10 by 15 meter hen laying house. And then we'll transition them in a few years time when we can get a church built. We're using what God has, has blessed us with. That's the seed money to get these materials going. And now we're gonna take that and we're gonna do something with it. Now I wanna tell you a few other details as we continue the slides. Calvary Chapel in Lake Stevens was the very first supporting church to emerge to back and get behind Adventure Soccer as a ministry. I don't take that commitment lightly, so it doesn't surprise me that God would use Calvary Chapel Lake Stevens to be the very first team back in to Eswatini post-COVID. That's a really big deal, and it, it seems like a minor detail to most, but not in my mind. I see this as groundbreaking. And number two, there has never been a foreign team that has entered into this community where Pastor Samora is. So is this an unreached people group? It doesn't necessarily fall into that category, but this is an unreached people group by missionaries like us that are going in to share the hope we have in Jesus. And this team now is not only gonna go in to this laying house and we're gonna pour a concrete floor in there and we need to raise the support to be able to do that tonight. We're gonna pour that floor in there. We're also gonna pour some tank stands for those water tanks because God answered another prayer of mine. You see, one of our solutions to water is we drill boreholes. They cost $12,000, that's a lot of money. Other times we'll collect it off of rooftops and we're gonna do that there. But this particular property, we found an irrigation line that runs to some sugarcane fields. And we were able to negotiate with that farmer to be able to tap into those lines. And every Saturday when he turns it on, we wanna fill those water tanks, those 5,000 liter water tanks up. So we're gonna pour some cement pads to be able to hold those tanks as well. That is an answer to prayer. The, we have living water now on a site where there isn't usable water within 20 kilometers of this place. 
That is a game changer. That's a game changer. So please pray with us for this. We're working now on getting the right filtration techniques in place to be able to make sure that water is clean and safe for drinking. But for now, we'll have water for cooking, cleaning, chickens, anything else that's going on on this property. So the tanks we found that you see behind are those 5,000 liter tanks. The other thing I am super excited about is our team's going to be doing some outreach. There is no kids ministry at this new church location. And we've got a dynamite team filled with a bunch of superstars that have been working to put together an outreach in these communities for kids that are in that age 5 to 12 range. They will never have been ministered to before. This is super exciting to me because these kids are not only going to, to get fed while they're there at the outreach, but they're also going to make a connection to the local church, which is what we want. They're going to be able to do crafts and games and activities, and every one of those kids is going to hear about who Jesus is. This is a victory already, and we haven't left this is a really big deal. Then we're going to mirror that same project at an adjacent church plant that is about 10, 15 kilometers away at Pastor Andiles as well. So this team's going to do that back to back. Not to mention this team has also been working on all the preparations because we have a brand new preschool in another church plant community. And that preschool has become a safety net for catching orphans and vulnerable children that just fall through the cracks. Not anymore in these places because they enter into preschool. We can make a relationship, build a relationship with them and get them registered for school and meet their needs as the body of Christ. This, this team that's leaving January 5th really needs your cover in prayer because they are going to be nonstop action this whole trip. I am going to exhaust them, and they're going to come home needing a break. Their first stop is going to be in that very place that Don shared about meeting that elder in Ibuga. And nope, they don't get a night to sleep. They don't even get a shower after 24, 40 hours of travel. They are hitting the ground and we're going to Ibuga and we're going to encourage those kids and those elders and those community and that preschool. And so I'm super excited about this. This is something we have the opportunity to partner with in prayer and partner with our finances. And if you're looking for that place, I can assure you, we are going to direct 100% of what comes in tonight right into what this trip is going to accomplish. And I really can hardly wait to report back on all the ways that God moved. So thank you so much for coming tonight. I'll pass it back off to Don. One of the bonuses that Matt didn't mention is the pads last time. The people that were there, we had to do those by hand. Mix the sand and everything in the water on the ground manually, but he's actually going to get a mixer this time, so we appreciate that. <laughs> um, can we get up the team members up here now? Okay, beforehand, I'd ask all of them to uh, what they're most excited about and what do you hope the Lord does in your heart? We can just sit along the front here if we want and just pass it down. So we'll pass the mic, have them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Chelsea. Um, so I am so excited to go on this mission trip. I've wanted to go on a mission trip for so long, and I am so excited that God called me to do this one. I just have such a heart for kids and such a heart for education, so I am so excited to go love on those kids and set up a new preschool and um, to run these little mini VBSs. I'm just so excited. And what I'm really hoping the Lord does in my heart there is, um, I really love routine and order. And sometimes it makes me not available to the Lord. So I'm really hoping that he will change me. And I'm going to let go of all my routines for a while. 
and that I really can be more available and not be driven by so much order. I'm Matthew, and I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget. Uh, I'm, ex I'm just honestly excited for the entire experience um, to be over there from the fellowship to our layover in London, the, the work we're going to do. We're going to be pouring concrete, and that's, if you don't know, that's what I do. So uh, <laughs> uh, doing that and, you know, being able to work with the Swazis, kind of seeing a, a different aspect of doing concrete work should be very interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, and then as far as what I'm hoping that God will do in my heart, I'm just trying to go in with an open heart and having him show me what he wants to show me because I'm, I'm trying to leave my expectations with that here. Um, my name is Logan and I'm most excited for this trip to um, just go over there and see the new culture and just see kind of the differences and not compare them but just more of see how much different it is um, there than it is here and I'm hoping that God will change my heart by um, I'm drawing a blank here um, by uh, making me more generous and more compassionate about those that don't have much and just to not be like oh it's only one dollar or it's only five bucks and just kind of understand the value of some things. Hi, I'm Joel Jurdy. I'm uh, super excited about this trip. Uh, when we had our first meeting and learning from Matt that it's mainly going to be a kid-centered trip, we're going there to do a lot of teaching and telling the kids about Jesus. I am really excited about that. I love hanging out with kids and getting to do stuff with kids. So. That made me really excited. I had signed up at the beginning and I felt like it should go, but didn't really know why. And then when I found out from Matt that it was about kids, I was like, yes. <laughs> Not super big on doing a bunch of projects, but like playing with kids, I can't get enough. So yeah. And then uh, something that I'm really um, hoping that God will do for me and my family is I want it to have an impact on my kids and my wife. I don't really know what that will be, but them taking the time to share me with someone else and giving up those 10 days is really amazing that my wife and kids are on board to do that. And I'm hoping God will just give me something uh, from the trip that I can think about in years to come. Just a little thought that would pass through my head that's like really useful. I don't know what that would be, but I'm hoping I find that little piece that just comes to mind and helps me be more effective at whatever I'm doing. So. Hello, I'm Michael Cooley, um, and I'm actually from Snohomish Community Church, but I'm lucky enough to, blessed enough to go on this trip, and my wife is going too, but she wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, so I'm speaking for both of us, and she's m way more well-spoken than I am, so. Uh, but I'm really excited for this trip, just to see the kids, and like Logan said, the difference in the culture. Um, and for my heart, I, I hope that God can um, just humble me, I guess, and, and not take things for granted. Um, so, yeah. Hello, uh, I'm Joel Vismanos. Um, so this will be my first mission trip, and so I have no expectations. I have no idea what I'm getting into. Um, having said that, I've been having a lot of moments of like having cold feet because I feel like we have teachers, we have people who have construction going, and they have like a direct use of why they're there and I'm going into this with none of those skills, none of those talents and I'm kind of like, man, I feel like I'm absolutely useless to this team and like I just don't want to get in the way, you know, and I'm like, I don't even think I should go. Um, but I was encouraged on Sunday, part of Pastor Shane's uh, message was exactly that as far as members of the body all have a purpose and I don't see it right now. I have no idea, you know, I honestly feel like I'm I have none of that skill, so that's where I feel like I'm more, most excited about where God's going to use what I perceive as useless 
to something useful. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm Chrissy Hall, and um, I think I'm drawing a blank too, Logan. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this has been a long time coming for me. Um, I've known the Rainies for many years and um, have wanted to go to Africa with them for many years, and it just wasn't ever the right time. And so it, it brings me back to the verses God gave me, because I, I hope I don't start crying, sorry. But it, I, um, it just was really on my heart to want to go. And I kept thinking, why can't I go, God? Why are you not letting, letting this be a yes, you know, for many years? And um, I mean, 12, I think, right, Matt? <laughs> so it's been a long time. But, um, you know, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, God says to trust, you know, trust in him with your whole heart, and he'll lead you. And he'll direct my paths, not me, you know, trying to figure out the right time. So um, just through the course of the last few years, there's been a lot of changes in my life. And um, this has opened this up again to where I felt like God was saying, you know what, now is the time. But then I'm a school teacher. And don't worry, we don't know everything, really, <laughs> believe me. Um, and... Um, we don't typically typically get time off during the school year, you know. So I was like, oh, I just don't think I can. This this isn't going to happen, you know. And Matt goes, Why are you? Why just do it? Just say you're going to go and you and turn in the paperwork. And I was like, Geez, bossing me around again, you know. But then I was like, Okay, I'll just do it. And and I did have to um, really depend on the Lord. And I had to end up meeting with the HR person because first he said no, and then. He said he would meet with me in person and talk about it, and he still said no, but then he goes, well, I'm going to let the superintendent figure it out, and he said yes, so I was like, okay. I mean, it was this sort of like roller coaster of maybe I'm not supposed to go, maybe this isn't the right time, but then God said yes, you know, so that was just really exciting and really cool to go back to that, okay, Chrissy, you need to have that trust in God that this is meant to be and you're supposed to be on this team. Because honestly, I've been feeling the same way. Like, everybody's like a good singer. They do this or that. What am I supposed to do? I, and then I got to thinking, you know what? I just want to be there to, like, hug on some kids. If that's all it is, for me, that's a really big deal. So, because um, like Joel, I just, I can spend every hour of the day with kids. So, um totally excited about the preschool getting started up hoping we can walk alongside that preschool teacher and just really encourage her um, I'm talking a lot sorry there was something else that I wanted to say but anyway I'm just totally excited that God's gonna do I think something amazing with this through this team but also in our hearts and I really do hope that he'll continue to show me in my heart that I just need to trust I need to trust him because things happen in life that you don't expect and you think, wow, why did that even happen? That's so crappy, you know, and then, but God shows you that he, he will take care of it and he does. Anyway, I'm just really excited. So thank you for coming tonight. Hi, I'm Jenna and I feel like this mission trip is like a redemption mission trip for me because I went to the Philippines in 2019 and I think I was just, I had more of a mindset of like, oh, I get to go somewhere new. And I didn't really understand it'd be hard. And so I'm like, I want to redeem. Like when Matt was like, we're not going to take a shower. I'm like, yes, <laughs> we're not going to take a shower. <laughs> and I remember Shane, I work here and I was like, Shane, I got to go on a mission trip. I got to redeem myself. He's like, just wait, you know, I think something, something bigger will come along. And then like a month later, he was like, you should go to Africa. And I was like, yes. So I'm just super excited. I think I'm most excited um, to work with um, the adults there because Matt said we're going to be able to, um, during VBS, be able to come alongside adults and just encourage them. And I just like to instill some confidence in them. I think that um, I've traveled some other places and they sometimes have a mindset of like, oh, you're smarter or you're an American or whatever. And I just really want to encourage them that the work they're doing is just so important and they're just as smart and they're just as capable because God is the one who equips us. Um, and then as far as things that I want the Lord to grow in me is, I think kind of like what Chelsea said, just like trusting in him. Um, Cause I haven't been somewhere so far away. And then also every trip I've gone on, I've been with like a best friend or my family or whatever. So I'm, not no offense to anyone I'm not super close to anyone here so I'm excited to get to know them better and then also just um, really rely on the Lord for just any trials we go through and yeah just also
just being open to what he has to show me. Good evening, I'm Mike McAuliffe, and this is actually my second trip with the church to go to Africa. I was uh, fortunate enough to go the first time they went, uh, what was that, about six years ago? So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Pastor Eric again, visiting with him, seeing how things have changed and some of the other things that have progressed over there since the last trip. Uh, I always enjoy working on the construction projects, so I'm looking forward to learning more about concrete and having fun, because uh, it's, it's quite the opportunity to go on these trips and just be able to, regardless of your skill level, regardless of your knowledge, you just jump in with both hands and just get to work and fill the hole or fill the need. And uh, what I'm looking forward to, which is similar to my previous trip to Africa, as well as another trip, is the camaraderie, the uh, relationship you get to build with the people that are on the team. You get to learn more about your, your fellow church friends, brothers and sisters, and you grow. And it's, I'm also excited about the, uh, the euphoric feelings that come along with these trips because they're incredibly awesome. They're fun. And it's, it's a good thing, as long as you can get over the exhaustion of the long air flight. <laughs> And, and there will be exhaustion. Um, I'm Don Booker. Um, I'm one of your elders here, and this will be my third trip now to Africa. Um, the times I've been there, my heart just uh, goes out to these kids and these um, people that really have nothing compared to what we have in the world. And um, it's just a, a blessing to be able to go over there and minister them, to them. And the fun part I like is just watching the growth in the team. Uh, it's just exciting. I, I find myself at times just standing back and watching people being stretched and doing things that they're not used to doing. And Joel, you will be used, believe me, heavily. Um, and it just is a blessing to me to, to see that the Lord is working through our church and through the individuals that, that uh, go here and also go on this trip. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I can't wait. Uh, and the Lord, every time I've been there has done a work in my heart and I can't wait to see what he does in it and I'm looking forward to it. So thanks, you guys. And we'll have a follow-up meeting, I think, the Wednesday after we return. So. And I do, thinking about it, it's amazing how the Lord just put this team together, as Matt said. Uh, we've got a... Matthew owns a concrete company. We've got teachers. We've got people that work in children's ministry. We've got salesmen that can carry anything and <laughs> do anything that anybody else can't do. You know, and it's just a blessing, and it's amazing when we see this, how God just puts these teams together. We went through the same experience last time. Lord, what are you going to do with this team? And it's just amazing what he does with these teams. And we can't wait to come back and share with you on, on what he does with us and, and what he does through him. Okay, Chelsea, we are ready for the basket challenge. Okay, I would love to have nine volunteers come up to see if they can walk from this line up here to that line with a basket on their head. Okay, Jack, Ryan, Aaron, Jocelyn. No adults, just kids? Come on. Ashlyn. Is it? Yeah. Oh. How many do I have? One, two. Okay. You can come on up. And Jaden. Okay. Okay, Jaden, you got some pressure here. Okay, we're going to do three at a time, and the winner of the three will wait up here, and then the, la the three winners of the three races will have a race off. Okay, so you're gonna have a basket and you have some fruit and bread in it, not real. And then, so you're gonna find a way to put it on your head and you need to walk, and it doesn't have to be fast, you just need to, whoever finishes first without the fruit or bread falling out. Thank you, honey. Okay, feet. Yeah, if you drop it, you're done. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Okay, Jocelyn is the winner. Nice job, though, guys. Maybe I should have put some heavier stuff in there. 
All right, you want to get the next three? So Jocelyn, hang out up here. All right, on your mark, get set, go. Oh, so Aaron, is it Layla? Or, okay. Hannah, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I need to get the, I'm usually down here, I'm not in the upper room. So you guys need to do a race off to see you guys tied. So sorry, one more time. All right, on your mark, get set, go. job so Aaron come hang out up here and then Ashlyn Jaden and was there one more oh okay All right, Jaden, you gotta tell your, your future daughter about this win here, come on. All right, on your mark, get set, go. Jocelyn, your, your feet are a little bit before the line there, sweetie. Okay, there you go. Okay. On your mark. Get set. Go. Oh, and Jaden's the winner! Nice job. Thank you, everybody who participated. Good job. I brought Matt up. I just wanted to give you guys an opportunity. Did you want to ask Matt any questions about adventure soccer or what we're doing in Africa uh, before we get to the giving side and then the closing side? Anybody have any questions for him? Great question. What am I most excited about? I have two answers to that question. Number one, and this is a, a deeply personal piece for me. Someone who is sitting up on this stage that I was sharing with you and is getting to travel was one of the very people who led me to Christ. That's a really special for me now to be able to go and minister together. Um, so that, that is really meaningful to me. The second piece is, is the last time I was in a village like this that was so aggressively turning for Jesus as I recognize this village and community is, celebrations were breaking out and people were pouring out by the thousands. I'm looking forward to that. We've been waiting, we've been praying, we've been preparing, and I'm just excited and, and anxiously awaiting that victory for Jesus. So, yeah, thank you for asking me that. Any other questions for Matt? Okay. 
Thanks, brother. Yeah. Okay, we're getting to the closing portion here, so we wanted to um, give you the opportunity to give, no pressure at all, in the middle of the tables. <laughs> Seriously, if it's on your heart, um, that's the way we would love you to give. Um, on the tables, they have a glass container with a blue thing in there. If you wanted to write a check and put it in there, that would be great. Um, you could leave it in the love box. Um, just put a note on there for Africa mission trip. And lastly, on your table numbers on the back of them, there's a code that you can use on your phones. Put that code in, it'll take you to, take you to the Calvary Chapel website. Go to the giving section, and then there's a pull-down tab. That pull-down tab has four options, I think. Uh, one of the options is Africa missions, I think it is. Okay, I wanted to thank everyone for coming tonight. It's been a blessing to see everyone show up here and uh, sharing for our passion uh, for our trip to East Watini. So I'd like to close this out in prayer quickly. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for just giving us this opportunity to serve you, Lord, and um, through this uh, ministry that's going on in Africa, Lord. We just thank you for these opportunities. Thank you for the opportunity for the body to be involved in this to, through prayer and through giving, Lord. We're just thankful, Lord. We just uh, look forward to see what you do in our lives and in our uh, um, trip over there, Lord. And we pray you go before us and guide us and direct us by your spirit, Lord. Keep us all safe on our way home today and let us have a great rest of the week. In Jesus' name, amen.